<laughs> Hello, Josh. What's happening? Yeah. So, COVID sort of happened overnight, and we're in a bit of a bind. Ugh. So, if you could just go ahead and drop everything you're doing and build us a data pipeline for our doctors that want to do research, that'd be just terrific, okay? Thanks. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. I'm going to need you to do that by the end of the week. Thanks. In a previous video, I talked about why healthcare is the greatest industry for data analysts, and I still firmly believe that. However, I am going to play devil's advocate and talk about reasons why you might not want to work in healthcare. Reason one, you are going to have a lot of projects with tight deadlines in your career. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. Healthcare is just one of the most heavily regulated industries in the whole United States. Many hospitals in the United States are accredited by an organization called the Joint Commission. The Joint Commission has all these rules about what a hospital should and should not be doing. It is crucial that many hospitals maintain that accreditation because insurance companies will require that. So in other words, if the hospital doesn't have a accreditation by some organization like Joint Commission, they don't get paid. Every so often, a surveyor from the Joint Commission will show up to the hospital unannounced to perform an inspection of the facilities. So if that hospital doesn't meet the standards of that surveyor, their accreditation could get totally revoked, which would mean that the hospital would just lose a ton of money until they correct those issues, and they would suffer from a tarnished reputation within the community. Hospitals have to be ready for these visits at all times. What that means for you as a data analyst analyst is you might be requested to build some kind of dashboard that looks at metrics pertaining to some of the things that surveyor is going to be looking at. And you might be given a really tight deadline. This could be things like how often did our nurses and doctors wash their hands before they entered a room to talk to the patient? Or what percent of our dialysis patients had adequate lab values like calcium or hemoglobin? They might give you short turnaround times because they know that it's been over a year since the last surveyor visited and that surveyor is just dying to pay your hospital a visit. Site surveyors are not the only thing that hospitals have to worry about though. Sometimes you'll have Hey Josh, what's happening? Uh, we have sort of a problem here. Yeah, that COVID data pipeline I asked you to build uh, we sort of don't have that yet. Hey boss, yeah, sorry, I just lost track of time. Mm. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, we sort of need that data as soon as possible. Did you get the memo about uh, I this? Know, I know, I got the memo. Mm. Yeah, well, if you could just remember to do that from now on, that'd be just terrific, okay? Thanks. So as I was saying, besides regulations within a hospital, sometimes you'll find that there are things that are happening at the local or national level that are just so crazy, it just disrupts everything that happens within the hospital and it will demand your full analytical support. When COVID first struck in the United States, my state was the first state to be affected. And you can be sure that that totally sent shockwaves throughout the local community. I had to drop everything I was doing to take COVID data from the SQL database and move it into a research database so that our doctors and researchers could work together to take that data and submit it to a medical journal. This required me to partner with a more senior data analyst who knew a programming language called R. He taught me how to program in R and to schedule the movement of the data using something called a cron job. So I had to learn all of this in a pretty short turnaround time because those doctors and those researchers needed that data as quickly as possible to study the long and short term effects of COVID. Because of all these tight deadlines that you're going to be facing in the healthcare industry, it's really important that you at least have a decent ability to tackle all of these competing priorities. And it's not at all uncommon for you to be working on one project, be almost completely done with it, only for that to be dropped in favor of something that needs 
much greater priority. And sometimes you'll be working on this high priority project and you'll spend days and weeks and months on it only for the person that asked for that dashboard to take a look at it for a few seconds and then never look at it again. <sighs> okay, where was I? Back to work, I guess. All right, well, the data pipeline is finished and just in time because one of the doctors wants me to check in with them, so. Yeah, I guess I'll see you in a few minutes. Um, uh, well, the uh, COVID data pipeline is ready, so I bet you're anxious to get started on that research. Uh, did you hear me, sir? Five days, seven hours. 13 minutes and 11 seconds. Um, I'm sorry, uh, what? That is precisely the length of time it took you to put your incompetence on full display. I, well, uh, you see, I'm, I'm kind of a Python guy. I, I, I mostly know Python, so I had to switch gears and learn R, and, you know, R isn't really the same thing as Python, so I had to learn that, and I had to learn how to set up a cron job, to schedule the code every now and then, and yeah, so that took time. Please don't kill me. Indeed. Do you know what also takes time? Finding someone who can do their job properly. Now get out of my sight! All right, maybe I exaggerated a little bit, but it kind of feels this way sometimes. Which leads me to my next reason. Doctors can be intimidating. Now, most of the doctors that I have worked with are pretty easygoing people. However, every now and then, you're going to cross paths with some doctors that might be very blunt and vocal, especially the surgeons. So if they see something in your data that they don't like, they're gonna call you out on that, whether you're in a room with 10 people or 100 people. So you need to be able to speak to your data and the methodology. Otherwise, it's gonna be really stressful and it might be a little embarrassing too. So one of the most common things that will happen is I will be asked to build some kind of report that measures physician productivity or the quality of care that they give. That might look something like how often did each of the emergency room doctors evaluate a patient within one hour of that patient being checked into their room in the emergency department. Then one of the doctors will see that they only do this one thing like 60% of the time while all the other doctors are a lot better at it and will do it like 80 or 90% of the time. So then that doctor will say, well, that can't be right. I'm always super quick to evaluate my patients, or I'm always the first person in the room to treat the patient, or blah, 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 blah. So in response to that, I have to concisely explain the methodology to them so that they can understand the results that they are seeing. And I have to explain to that doctor, well, Dr. Smith, I'm not measuring the time it takes you to set foot in the room. I'm measuring the time it takes you to set foot in the room talk to the patient, evaluate them, and then chart that in the medical record system. Usually explaining the methodology to the doctors diffuses them a little bit, but getting good at communicating with doctors takes time, and it's going to be a little bit stressful at first, so you do have to have a thick skin. All right, well, now that I'm done meeting with the doctors, I guess I just need to check my inbox and see if there's any outstanding requests here. Oh, great, there's an email from my boss. Let's see what it says. Hey, Josh, what's happening? Yeah, so that COVID data pipeline I asked you to build, yeah, turns out the researchers aren't actually using it after all. So uh, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and shift gears for a little bit. So if you could just build us a clinical pathway for our seizure patients, that'd be just terrific, okay? Great work, Josh, thanks. A clinical freaking pathway? Has he seen our clinical pathway? It's so complex. I mean, this is gonna take weeks to program. Not, not even weeks, months. Which leads me to my final point. In healthcare, there is a high learning curve if you are just starting out. You're probably going to feel really overwhelmed with 
all the stuff that you need to know. And because there's so much you need to know, you're gonna be asking a lot of different people a lot of different questions. And if you're anything like me, you're probably gonna feel really dumb for a while. I still feel really dumb in my job. For example, I had to program a clinical pathway or a sort of medical algorithm for our seizure patients at my current hospital. In this clinical pathway, certain medications have to be given at the right moments after a patient suffers from a seizure or if they continue to suffer from a seizure. So I had to ask some pretty basic questions when I started this project, like how are we even defining seizure events and are there certain patients that we want to exclude or certain patients that we want to include? I also had to figure out the proper timing of the medications. They also wanted me to capture each seizure that happened for every patient that was 12 hours or greater apart. So long story short, you'll probably be learning things at a very slow pace when you first start. So if you get discouraged easily, and you aren't really good at collaborating with different groups of people, you might find that you have a rough start in your first couple years on the job. However, I will say that that learning curve gets much more manageable if you're working with a team of data analysts. If you end up like me when I first started in data analytics and you don't have a team of data analysts that you can turn to within your department, you might be in for a bumpy road when you're first trying to learn all these things. So the ability to learn things on your own independently is going to be a crucial skill for you depending on where you work in healthcare, especially in the smaller hospitals. Now, if you think you can deal with all those things, I have good news for you. Healthcare is gonna be a fantastic industry for you as a data analyst. If you haven't seen it already, check out my next video where I go over five reasons why healthcare is the best industry for data analysts. Thanks everyone and I'll see you in another video.